Yeah, this is Billiam. Spike TV is the worst channel in the history of cable television. How fat would a dude have to be to stop a bullet? <laughs> During the day, Spike TV would disguise itself as an unassuming network, just airing reruns of movies and CSI. But at night, Spike TV would transform into Goon Central, Gooner Town. This is something only meant to be consumed secretly in a dark room when nobody else is awake. I grew up on this stuff and it messed me up a little bit. And now, over the last few months, I've been doing nothing but indulging in Spike TV and I'm a little messed up again. From Mancers, Stan Lee's original superhero, Stripperella, Deadliest Warriors, and 1000 Ways to Die, this is the most unhinged thing that's ever been broadcast on American airwaves. If you watched our TLC series, you may not be surprised to hear this is the first part of a new series on Spike TV. In this part, we're going to talk about their mission as a channel by examining two of their shows. First is the worst of the network, Mancers. How many boobs does it take to screw it? a light bulb. A show answering questions no human has ever asked with editing that couldn't have been made by a human. Can you fart so hard your balls explode? Then we're gonna look at the best TV show Spike ever produced, The Joe Schmo Show. One real guy competing for $100,000 on a reality show that he doesn't know is fake. A reality show where everyone is an actor except the main character who has no idea the entire series is about him. This show is great because because our Joe Schmo is constantly rising above what Spike TV expects from him as a dude. What red-blooded American male is gonna let go of a porn star's breast without having to be drug off? It is one incredible piece of television that also borderlines on being really awful. In the next part, we're gonna be discussing the Spike TV iceberg, looking at every obscure and weird thing they ever did. But for now, this is why Spike TV is the worst channel in the history of man. Kind. I've got a question for you. What makes me grow up big and strong and ready to pump iron at any time? It's today's sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers chef-crafted and dietitian approved pre-made meals right to your door. It could work into your very busy, certainly manly schedule. Get as little or as many meals as you want. You can have up to six to 18 meals a week. And no stress, you can pause or reschedule deliveries at any time. Like I mentioned, these meals come pre-prepped, so no need to do any cooking or cleaning up. This time around, we got the herb-crusted chicken with mashed potatoes and toasted almond cream beans. It was surprisingly so good. The chicken was so moist, and when the herbs collided with the mashed potatoes, uh, we also got these wellness shots. Remember, these are important and will come up again later. Did you know that Factor also offers gourmet options? Coming soon, we're gonna have a surf and turf and a surf and surf option. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code Billiam50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three different flavors included in every single order while you're still an active subscriber. See? I told you those wellness shots would come up again. Thank you again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Notoriously, Mancers is the worst of Spike TV. How can you harness the power of your pants? Dude, you're packing a lot of power in your pants. Described as a program that gets to the bottom of bar room questions, I am hard pressed to find any show equally as brain rottingly chaotic. Can you freeze your farts and smell the blade? So you can freeze a fart, but how? Can beer make your girlfriend's boobs bigger? Yes, yes. I think Eric Andre was able to eloquently put into words what this show was about. The whole show is just like boobs, farts, boobs, farts, boobs, farts. Can you bang so hard your wang snaps off? The narrator is screaming at you like they're trying to sell you used appliances for a suspiciously good price. Cytokines are drill sergeant molecules that speed up the clotting in your dog. Mancers is trying to convince you not to click away. It's a constant assault on your senses. What is going on? I can't change the channel. You chowing down on dog food in a post-apocalyptic hellhole, but the planet will still be here. Sex, war, expert testimony. You have no time to process any of it. Suddenly a guy is pissing Gatorade like a fire hose toward all of his friends. There's a line of women in bikinis all farting and a heavy guy jumping on a silicone breast implant. Describing what is literally happening on this show would make you sound insane. The migraine inducing editing is the perfect compliment to all of the questions that need answering because they also give me a migraine. Did your farts save your buddy from drowning? Oh 
my God. I love this question because they justify asking it by stating mouth to mouth CPR is too gay. So you should fart on your buddy's mouth instead, which in my opinion, putting your ass to another guy's mouth is a little gayer. So that's kind of a based answer. Can you fart so hard your balls explode? If you coat your butt with a flammable material, hold an open flame to it and then fart, then yes, you can fart so hard your balls explode. Boom! Barbecued balls! It seems like such an obvious answer. Flammable materials catch on fire even if it's on your ass. This show is so silly. What other silly things do they have to share with us? What kind of people meat do cannibals prefer to eat? Okay, what? 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 Who allowed this to be produced? And what race is it? Japanese! There was no satisfying answer. At a surface level, there is an entertainment value. I mean, I think there's a cleverness to stupidity. And if you disagree with me, you're stupid. But enough compliments. So much of this show just exists to give bad advice. So, how can you make your girlfriend less bitchy? Okay, I'm... Make your girlfriend happy by having sex with her. Babe, I know I crashed your car, but you know what'll make it better? If you want to tell if she's a hooker or a cop, ask her to take some nude modeling pictures. I need to write this down. How can you defend yourself in a barroom brawl? We got all the secrets, bro. So three full-grown dudes walk up to this guy and they're gonna kick his ass. Go, pretty boy. Step one, the chokehold. Then the hammer fist. Finally disarm the weapon. He's kicked all their asses. Want to know how to win a fight against three different guys? All you gotta do is watch this video one time. Now come at me! The best of answers is when there's a protagonist. Like when these questions can only be answered through the existence of like a weird guy. One specific weird guy. How can your penis make a face? How can your penis make a face? By painting a picture with it. Like this weird guy. It's like they find the weird guy first and then think of the question later. He paints faces with his bushy brush and he paints the backgrounds with his ass. He is a true renaissance man. Then we get our fictional protagonists created for the B-roll. How could a guy most likely get out of jury duty? This guy can't go to jury duty because he's hanging out at the pool with his babes. Your honor, I can't go to jury duty at 8 a.m. On a Monday, I always go to the pool with babes on 8 a.m. on a Monday. And every weekday, really. I can't go to jury duty, your honor. This guy is fighting a snake, and the snake shows up in a trench coat to his home. But they show you how to get the snake off. It's like trying to undo a knot when it's tied at both ends. Just, you're not gonna do it. Good jerking that snake off! Yo. That is not what he said. The heaviest B-roll lifting is easily done by the abundance of models. Just a constant influx of women dancing around and without really saying anything. Oh my God. She's giving, I'm cold. It's wild how they just toss these models around as props. What? I think they might be objectifying women. I might be the only one here noticing guys, but I think that they are objectifying women. Can you bounce a quarter off a stripper's ass? Watch again. Right there. What do you think, women, about how I've noticed them objectifying women? What do you think about me? women. Ultimately, the core to Mancers as a program isn't about how ridiculous it is. It's about how obsessed it is with sex. Sex? How can you most likely score with a lesbian? How much bigger have boobs gotten in the last 15 years? How much boob is more than a handful? Double D's are like two spoons. In what country are you most likely to get a three-way? How many boobs does it take to screw in a light bulb? Yes! I'll never forget going to a sleepover as a kid and staying up till 2 a.m. and having mancers come on. Our friend's mom walked into the room and asked us what we were watching and f***ing Tony sitting in the corner just said, How teeny can a bikini get? It would be illegal. She turned that shit off immediately. You sold us out, Tony. Who knew somebody could be a frat at 11 years old? Don't call me. Don't come by my house. 
done. This show is so shameless about just being porn for cable TV. It's insane how they got away with it. How can you generate electricity with huge bouncing boobs? So in this episode, they hook up electrodes to some boobs nice. and have the model jump up and down displaying her maxed out jiggle physics. So yeah, huge bouncing boobs do create electricity. Like any huge bouncing object. This is basic cable TV porn. I saw this when I was 12. That's exactly what it is. I will not be taking questions. How would big boobs bounce on the moon? How loud do speakers have to be to blow a girl's clothes off? Someone rip your eye out with their bare hands. Huge bouncing boobs. Boob. Would it take to blow up first? One septillion. Sex is great, and sex is fine to portray in media, and it's okay to criticize how the media portrays sex. So with that said, the way Mansers promotes sex obsession is just a little strange. Disturbing, even. Like, I'm beginning to think you don't really care if boobs can effectively wash cars. I think you have ulterior motives. Just rub it out! Whoop, whoop. I've reviewed a lot of media targeted at children, so I got the great idea to look at what common sense media had to say about this show. It's a ratings board for parents and children, and they had a lot to say about Mansers back in the day. First, we got some reviews from parents. No one would want their teen behaving like the immature people featured on this show. The show's consistent, almost subconscious belittling of women is stereotypical and misogynistic. Their bodies are appreciated, and how. But they're written off as being hopelessly bitchy. Almost subconscious is a crazy way to describe the misogyny in Mansers. It is not almost subconscious. Guys have been trying for years to figure out what puts a woman on the expressway to Bitchville. It's very conscious. For all the people who say it's sexist, stupid, and maybe just downright trash, you need to turn around and realize something. If it's so sexist, I wonder how they got people to be on the show. There are lots of women. Remember women, if somebody's being sexist to you, why are you there then? This is the most brilliant brain dead thing I've ever read and it gets way better. I would rather have my kids watch this than read the Bible. At least Mansers has a warning on it. To all the people who said violence is the problem, then I say we boycott the Bible. For all the killing in it used for the purpose of getting people to conform. You know what? I'll say it, you're a bad parent if you don't let your kid watch Mansers. You should make your kid watch Mansers. In fact, I have testimony from real kids written when Mansers was airing. I love this show. I am a 17 year old dude, so you can probably see why. Absolutely gorgeous women, violence, and over the top, just the way it should be. And before you call me a sexist a-hole, I have a girlfriend with A-cup breasts, but I still love and respect Spectre. I think we lost him, guys. He's gone. This show is so sick, but it's a guy show. Women wouldn't like it. For example, my girlfriend hates this show, but my best friends, dudes, love this show. World's worst show. This is offensive to women. This show is so gonna go out of business. I'm wishing all of my haters a very going out of business. Great for teens. Good show for teens to relax to without showing nudity. What do you mean by relax? This is the most insane cracked energy show I've ever seen. It's like Subway Surfers, plus Family Guy, plus a Twitch hot tub stream, plus Mortal Kombat, plus a Vine Boom air horn. It's anything but relaxing. What do you mean by relax? Oh. The Spike TV Manifesto, which is a word exclusively used by sane people, was an internal document which guided every TV show Spike would make. Its pages were detailed by Justin K. Fear at Vice News in 2018. The year Spike TV died, a story which we'll cover in the next video. Alongside the rest of this crazy document. So what does it say? You've been PC'd to death and we're not afraid to say it, show it, make fun of it. And if guys love it and want to see it, we'll never apologize for airing it. The manifesto has an air of condescension. According to the Spike TV manifesto, Festo, Spike TV is for men. Spike isn't here to preach or tell you how to live your lives. That's what wives and girlfriends are for. I'll say it. Dudes rock, salute to dudes. But Spike TV's idea of what being a dude is means you're not allowed to be smart and you have to hate your girlfriend if you've got one. 
But if you don't, it's not your fault. I wish Spike had faith in me. Faith in dudes. The manifesto speaks to the alpha cuck sigma balls brain rot. That's not even the traditional image of like a masculine dude. But Spike is speaking to the eternal bachelor. Nowadays, we'd call this kind of guy an incel, but back then an incel could be alpha. Now, to me, that's not a dude's rock attitude. That's a dudes who are dumb will eat the slop in front of them attitude. Mansers literally stole their editing style from Power Thirst, this old YouTube viral video. Blow your mind. Power Thirst. Now comes in women! women! Now with preposterous amounts of testosterone! Preposterone! It's insane to just watch a corporation steal from the little guy. Unacceptable! Ultimately, it's Spike TV's very own The Joe Schmo Show that provides the perfect antithesis to the channel's view of dudes. It's one of those reality shows that is only so good because it also toes the line of being one of the worst things you've ever seen. Enjoy this fetching plate of canine feces. No, 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 no. It transcends the genre. Matt Kennedy is straight up just a dude from Pittsburgh and season one's Joe Schmo. The picture of the everyman who believes he's been cast on the competitive reality show, The Lap of Luxury. Reality TV shows are already heavily scripted, so the fake production sort of provides the perfect backdrop for meta commentary. The perfect setting for successfully gaslighting somebody for the sake of entertainment. Matt arrives first and one by one meets an ensemble of characters, Earl the veteran, Molly the Virgin, Ashley the Rich Girl, Kip the Gay Guy, Gina the Schemer, Brian the Buddy, Hutch the Asshole, and Dr. Pat. Played by f Kristen Wiig in her first big TV gig. Hey everybody, Pat's home from working while her lazy ass husband is sitting around the couch drinking Keystone while it's just Kung Pao Chicken. As a part of this setup, Matt is told cast members are paired together to sleep in the same bed, leaving Matt and the soon to be famous Dr. Pat. I hope there's three beds. Uh, there better be. <laughs> a wild position to put an actor in that certainly would not happen today. Matt's confessional interviews convinces us he's totally unaware of the illusion, while the actors themselves break character for their interviews, allowing the audience to appreciate the tension in maintaining this high stakes improv game for a multi-million dollar production. A grand scale gaslighting campaign targeting one dude from Pittsburgh. I'm from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Immediately, they're just testing what kind of guy Matt is. Kip is so overtly gay that Matt can't help but to ask, are you overtly gay? Kip, you're gay, huh? We're on red alert for homophobia, but Matt's just like, it's okay, dude. Just so you know, I'm an ally, bro. I'm an ally. ally. Just so you know that. He said ally in 2003? Who taught him that word? Matt even steps in to defend Kip from that asshole Hutch. Hey, Kip, Kip. Watch Don't even it. respond. Yeah. Because you got the Matt man. You got the Matt man. I'm the sickest dude, baddest dude here. He's truly sticking up for the little guy. Immediately, Matt's sincerity sticks out in a way that makes it apparent the entire production had to be as ready to improvise as the cast members were. Now in his confessionals, Matt is not shy about the fact that he's trying to score. He thinks all the women are hot. I'm um, like a hot blonde girl, you know? Hi. Nice to meet you. Of anyone here, I'd, I'd like to get to know her. <laughs> Gina, she's, she's quite sexy too. And I have no problems. Well, you know, with, with uh, hooking up with other races or anything like that. Japanese! He's definitely comfortable with his sexuality, and we love him because he's not a creep about it. He's really only saying this in his confessional. It's supposed to be your inner thoughts. In the game show storyline, cast members are voted out of the house in a poignant exaggeration of the Bachelor's Rose Ceremony. After the votes are counted, the host announces who has been voted off, smashes a plate in the fireplace, and proclaims, you're dead to us. You're dead to us. It's such a poetic take on the unnatural social scenarios characters in reality shows are forced into. In one of the challenges, which is really just an experiment at Matt's expense, the cast is told to grope a naked model. Someone is looking down on me. It's uncensored on DVD and the uncensored DVD is on YouTube uncensored. Boob on YouTube? She's consenting to the challenge, obviously, so everyone gets up in there. Just touch the breast, you know, you know, get that texture. <laughs> Matt places one Matt places one hand on her titty, realizes he's uncomfortable, and takes it off. He acts against this immense social pressure and states, 
I don't want to do this. We watch as every one of the actors breaks character to gawk at Matt's decision. What red-blooded American male is going to let go of a porn star's breast? They were not expecting him to do this. This was not the network's expectation of Matt. All eyes are on him and he says one more thing. I hate sharing the bed. I get my own bed and I need my sleep and I know you folks aren't voting me off tonight, right? He says, I'm not gonna share a bed with this woman I just met, even though I think she's attractive. He thinks it's a strange scenario to be forced into. Joe Schmo, the average guy, does not fit into the mold the show is trying to put him into. He's supposed to be the average guy. Spike TV is supposed to be for guys, but they don't know him. Though later, Matt displays the duality of man. Chocolate makes me sick to my stomach. I hate the taste of it. Uh-oh, this creates a problem when he's told to lick another model covered in chocolate. And this time, there's no hesitation. His mouth goes right for the titty, even though he's gonna gag on that chocolate. Oh my God! Oh God. I can't, I can't, I want to, and I can't! Joe Schmo, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I get it, dude. Like I've said many times before, man, I want a house, a dog, and a girl. <laughs> Joe Schmo does not cleanly fit into Spike TV's view of dudes. The average man is not a Spike TV man. Obviously, Matt is portraying a version of himself for the cameras, and he is consciously and subconsciously aware of that. Yet it's through being aware and choosing to act, as we're all capable of doing, Matt becomes such a lovable character in a scenario that feels so evil. We watch production deter the actors from becoming romantically involved with Matt for the sake of the story line as not to cross a line. Instead, they choose another manipulative direction. <laughs> it's the whole show. I, 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 it feels redundant to say it's manipulative. As soon as Matt decides he won't sleep in a bed with Dr. Pat, Dr. Pat moves in on the asshole, Hutch. Hutch is nasty and, I, and Dr. Pat is not. She has class and even yesterday she wanted to vote Hutch off and he smells and leaving Matt to say, huh? She kind of acknowledged it a little bit, I guess. Um, Dr. Pat acknowledged that they may have, I don't know. The craziest scenario is the love triangle between Molly the Virgin, Ashley the rich girl, and Ralph the host. And I'm not trying to be a dickhead, but I don't want to be in the middle of a fight over and Ralph. As a host, Ralph is a typical Hollywood asshole who's not quite enthused about the job he has. I will talk to the producers, and now I don't have to wonder what the, the low rung of my career is going to be anymore. It's not the bee costume that will define your career, it's how you wear the bee costume that will define your career. The only time Matt suspects somebody is an actor is when he meets a fake executive. Ralph brings everyone into a room to play a new challenge, eating gross things. A game targeted at Matt's tendency to gag, but if they all eat something gross, everybody gets a flat screen TV. This is 2003. Matt gets served literal dog shit and this crosses a line with him. He refuses, so Ralph the host escorts Matt into the executive's office so they can discuss an alternative. After all, they have a show to make. The executive and Ralph play it up as if neither one of them are happy to be working together, and ultimately, the executive offers Matt a deal. He won't have to eat shit if he can do one thing convince Molly and Ashley, who are paired against each other for the host's affection, to take their clothes off or make out. Going topless is not a bad thing. Hutch, it's a sensitive situation. I understand that, but it's In Spike TV's world, girls are either fighting for a guy or making out with each other. Joe Schmo asks them to go along with it so he doesn't have to eat shit. but production insists he would have never had to eat shit. Thank God. I don't know what's real and what's not anymore. But later, Matt shares that he believes the executive was actually an actor. The only time and only scenario in which Matt was suspicious. I asked him today, I'm like, was that guy up in the room really a, like a, a network guy? Like I thought he was like an actor or something. <laughs> The illusion never breaks for Matt. And the most powerful scene in the show is when he starts becoming invested in the relationships he's made, creating this shared emotional moment underlied by an intense 
level of dramatic irony. Earl the veteran has a small character arc where he learns to accept Kip even though he's gay, all through conversation. From a dramatic perspective, this character arc is so simple, but imagine being Matt and seeing it in front of your eyes and believing it's real. Taught me the most the uh, time I've been here. Let it be Kip. It's such a small thing that speaks to the beauty of socializing with new people, getting outside of your comfort zone and growing as a human being and sharing the human experience. And then they vote Earl out of the house. You're, You're dead, dead to us. us. Matt begins to cry, all because he saw the positive impact the show these people were having on Earl, and he wanted him to have another chance. Suddenly, everyone else begins to cry because they are touched by Matt's humanity. They're guilty for the mean trick they're playing on him. Nothing is worth this. No amount of money. What's that? It's not worth it, It's gonna be fine. And without hyperbole, this is one of the greatest moments of television ever created. Sincerity, cruelty, and all. Eventually, Hutch the asshole wins the competition, but is disqualified when he is revealed to have been an actor the whole time. My name's not the Hutch. My name is David Hornsby. Matt looks shocked, but he doesn't get it yet. The production has been ruined by this actor, David Hornsby, who says if he's disqualified, everyone has to be disqualified because they're all actors. Come on, guys, raise your hand if you're an actor as well. Please, I mean, come on. Let's be honest about this. Matt thinks, I'm not an actor, before quickly coming to a complete understanding of the situation. This whole thing has been about him. <laughs> Every <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? The production awards him the $100,000 prize money, and the entire cast and crew tells him he was a golden boy and they love him. You make the right choice so yeah. often, it's incredible. I, I, I mean, that's a credit to, you know, what I come from. Sure. Tebow. I'm going to Pittsburgh! Matt is a little shocked to learn that his best friend he made over the last few months is actually an actor and a writer on the show. It went much deeper with him. And, you know, this, now we're getting into the whole, like, resentment I have towards Brian that I need to work out before we continue our friendship. Pranked ya, idiot. And over the years, Matt has had really hot and cold, positive and negative emotions about his time on the show. He said he's ultimately become grateful for the experience, but I don't blame him for taking a long time to come to that conclusion. I wouldn't blame him if he changed his mind again, because ultimately Matt did not like being told he was the approximation of the average guy. He didn't like being pigeonholed by Spike into being a particular person. How do you feel about being referred to as Joe Schmo? Not a big fan of the yeah. name. You know, uh, your whole life you use it, yeah, that dude's a Schmo, you know? And then here I am, Joe Schmo. Um, but you know, Ralph, there couldn't be a better Schmo. It's truly a wild thing, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Spike TV's catalog of shows is one of the most degenerate libraries in the history of man. Next video, we're gonna go deeper into Spike's manhole, finding out who's stronger on the deadliest warrior, like a pirate versus a knight or the IRA versus the Taliban. We're even gonna watch Spike's original cartoons like Stan Lee's Stripperella, Ren and Stimpy's adult party cartoon, and the incredible Afro Samurai voiced by Samuel L. Jackson. There's the birth of the video game awards, Blue Mountain State. What Spike TV shows are you excited for me to get into? What was it like pressing that subscribe button or commenting down below or liking this video? See you soon.